just give it a moment for people to come in from the waiting room. As a reminder, please mute yourself unless you are appearing before the board or testifying. Good morning. This is a hearing before the licensing board for the city of Boston. Today is Wednesday, July 28th, 2021. Today's hearing is being held pursuant to certain temporary amendments to the open meeting law. That is what allows us to meet virtually. Today's hearing will be recorded and will be posted to the city of Boston's website. Before I review procedural matters, I will introduce Chairwoman Kathleen Joyce. Good morning, my name is Kathleen Joyce, I'm Chair of the Licensing Board, and today I am joined by Commissioner Liam Curran and Commissioner Kiana Saxon. Thank you. As a reminder, please mute yourself unless you are testifying or appearing before the board. Please ensure that both your audio and your video are working. I will call each item in the order it appears on the agenda. I will then ask who is present on behalf of the licensee. After that, you will make a brief presentation regarding your proposal followed by questions from the chairwoman and the commissioners. Following the questions, there will be testimony beginning with elected officials or their representatives. Please limit your testimony to two minutes and please state your name, address, and affiliation, if any. Calling Press Juicery Inc. doing business as Press located at 148 Brookline Avenue has applied for a common vigiler license to be exercised on the above. Kitchen and storage for a Press Juicery retail shop Manager Greg Williams, hour of, hours of operation 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Um, Guy Byington, Director of Construction with Press Usury. Great, please go, again. go ahead. Yeah, so uh, we are um, opening, well, we're in process right now in lease negotiation uh, with um, uh, the landlord at the 148 uh, uh, Brookline Avenue project. Um, our company is Press Juicery. Uh, we will be selling prepackaged uh, juice products, shots, um, uh, frozen, uh, not. Uh, sorry, uh, non-dairy uh, freeze products. So they're all plant-based and we also offer acai bowls. Um, we don't have any outdoor seating. We won't have any outdoor music. Uh, our product is primarily nutritional based and uh, most of the um, most of our products or our transactions will be um, uh, uh, takeaway. Okay. Um, can you tell, remind me what the hours are at this location? Uh, nine a.m. to nine p.m. Okay, seven days a week. Yes. Okay. I don't have any other questions. Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curran? No questions, thank you. Are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding this application, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes, good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. Lisa Hai with the Mayor's Office and Neighbor Services. The Mayor's Office would like to go on record to support. They met with the Fenway Civic Association and no concerns were raised. Press Juicery will be on the main uh, commercial stretch of the Fenway and will be a great addition to the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who wish to testify regarding this application? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Calling Vet Vetanic Inc. doing business as Gong Cha located at 281 Huntington Avenue has applied for a common vigilant license to be exercised on the above Customer area has 14 seats. Applicant prepares bubble tea, slush, and other tea beverages from behind the counter. One bathroom, manager, Pisef Chiev, hours of operation, 11 a.m. to 1 a.m. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Uh, me, uh, my name is Pisef Chiev, and I am the manager at this location. Um, good morning. Oh. <laughs> Do you want to tell the board what you're proposing? Yeah, so uh, we are trying to open a bubble tea shop uh, called Gongcha. Um, 
we will be selling like uh, bubble tea products, like all, uh, including like tea, milk tea, um, and slushes, and all prepared behind the counter. Um, we will uh, mostly so we have like fourteen seats for our customer, but uh, the basic of the um the the typical uh. Yeah, the basic of the, the business is like mostly people just like grab and take it out. And uh, we are looking to hire like uh, from local. So like uh, we will put like a poster up and trying to see if, you know, people uh, around the area like looking for a job or something. We, we will try to uh, do that. And um, yeah, <laughs> is there any question for me? Um, yes. Is this your first location or do you have other locations in Boston? This is not our first location. We have a location in Malden as well. Malden, okay. And how long have you been operating there? Oh, uh, for one year. Okay. We opened July last year. Oh, okay. Yeah. And um, you're proposing 11 a.m. to 1 a.m. Is that seven days a week? Seven days. Okay. Um, I don't have any other questions. Commissioners Saxon or Karen? No questions. Seeing no questions, are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding this application beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Lisa High with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. They met with the Fenway Civic Association and therefore the Mayor's Office would like to go on record to support and wish them the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who wish to testify regarding this application? I see that Douglas Anderson has his hand raised. Mr. Anderson, are you looking to testify regarding this matter? No, I'm trying to get my picture on the camera. I've never done this before. Okay. okay. You, I'm, I'm so sorry. No, I'm, no. I'm, uh, seeing no other individuals who wish to testify, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Calling Boston Ocean Club LLC doing business as Mastro's Ocean Club located at 22 Liberty Drive. Holder of a common vigilar seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business from Peter Papagellas to Sophia Boyd, who is present on behalf of the licensee. Is there anyone present on behalf of Mastro's? Can you hear me? Yes. yes, we can hear you. I'm oh, sorry about that. Um, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Elizabeth Pisano from Upton, Connell, and Devlin, Council for Mastros. Uh, Sophia is on here with me today. She is the proposed manager of record. Sophia here? Yes, I'm here. Good morning. Oh. Okay. Um, Sophia has over 10 years of experience in the food and beverage industry. Uh, she's been the assistant general manager at Mastro's for the past seven years. And prior to that, she was a bar manager at Legal Seafoods for four years. She is a US citizen and a Massachusetts resident, and she's familiar with the rules and regulations regarding the sale of alcoholic beverages. And um, we're happy to answer any uh, questions you may have. Oh, thank you, and thank you for uh, covering those four uh, manager of record questions. My only other question is, are there any other changes besides a manager of record? No. Nope. Everything else is staying the same. Okay. Commissioners Saxon or Curran, do you have any questions? No. Seeing no questions, are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding this application? Seeing no one, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling American Multi Cinema Inc. doing business as AMC Theaters, Boston Common 19, located at 175 Tremont Street. Holder of a common vigilar seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business from Susan Hale to Reza Merchant, Attorney Andrew Upton. Attorney Upton. Good morning, Madam Chair, Commissioners Andrew Upton from Upton, Connell, and Devlin for the applicant. Uh, with me is Reza Merchant. Uh, we are happy to let you know that the movie theater is back in action uh, and we have a new manager. Reza is a US citizen, a mass resident. Uh, he previously worked at AMC in Framingham, supervising the sale and service of alcohol. 
and he is familiar with the rules and regulations of this board and the ABCC. Uh, and the movie theater will continue on as before. There's no other changes except for this new manager. Thank you, Attorney Upton. Uh, one question, are you open? When are you planning on opening? Reza, are you open now? Uh, yes, we are open now. Okay, I, I actually got two calls this week about movie theaters in Boston, so I'm happy to be able to report that. Yes, we are open again, thankfully. They're opening, okay, great. Um, I don't have any questions, Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Up. Uh, not Commissioner Upton, Commissioner Curran. Seeing no questions from Commissioner Upton, Saxon, or Curran, <laughs> uh, are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you very much. Calling LSF Legal Crossing LLC, doing business as Legal Crossing or LX, located at 558 Washington Street. Holder of a common vitular seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business from Maura Kavanaugh Daniel to Douglas P. Anderson. Attorney Trish Farnsworth. Attorney Farnsworth. Um, hi, I'm sorry. Uh, Trish isn't here. I'm Donna Cruz. I am a paralegal with the company, so I'm representing the company. And I also have Doug Anderson, the manager here. Hello. Sorry, my camera's not working. I'm sorry. My camera's not working either. I don't. I can't get a picture up. Are you on um, a cell phone, Mr. Anderson? Yes, I just got a new a new phone. Leslie, can we move forward without the picture? Yeah, we we can trust that okay. uh, that you're you were there, Mr. Anderson. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ms. Cruz. Um, yeah, so um, LSF Legal Crossing has filed to change its manager to Doug Anderson, who has been um, with Legal Seafood since 2012. So he's very adept um, and has a lot of knowledge uh, regarding running the restaurant. Okay. Uh, Mr. Anderson, are you a citizen? Yes, I am. Are you a resident of the Commonwealth? Yes, I am. And are you familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes, I am. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't have any other questions, Commissioner Saxon or Curran. See no questions. Are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding this matter? Seeing no one, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Calling DA Crossing LLC, doing business as JM Curley, located at 21 to 27 Temple Place. Holder of a common vigilant seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to change the manager of the license business from C Cody Guardino to Kevin D. Mabry. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Uh, Madam Chairman, members of the board, Bob Akbina, um, manager of the DA Crossing LLC. And along with me, Kevin Mabry. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Um, are there any other changes other than the change to the manager of record? Uh, none, Madam Chairman. Uh, they're, they're, um, Kevin Mabry was originally our beverage director with uh, J.M. Curley, doing business as J.M. Curley. And we're happy to have him back and quite excited about uh, that change. And, and with all the other changes in the world, we're quite happy that there are no other changes. Okay. Um, so am I for, on, for your sake. Um, Mr. Mr. Mabry, I just wanna go over the, the questions before the, for the board. Are you a citizen? Yes, I am. Are you a resident of the Commonwealth? Yes, I am. Are you familiar with the rules and regs of this board, the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes, I am, Madam Chairman. Okay, I don't have any other questions, commissioners, do you? Seeing no questions, are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Calling BVP LLC, doing business as The Point, located at 147 Hanover Street. Holder of a common vigilar seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business from Peter White to Christopher Gall, who is present on behalf of the licensee. That would be me, Christopher Gall, I'm present. Uh, Mr. Gall, are you a citizen? I am, yes. Are you a resident of the Commonwealth? Yes, I am. Are you familiar 
um, with the rules and regs of this board, the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes, ma'am. Do you have experience in the food and beverage industry? Yes, I've been uh, working at uh, the point since I've been 21, um, 31, going to be 32. I've held very much, you know, pretty much every position there. Um, took over the place when I was, you know, 23 uh, under Peter White and Valerie Post, Howie Berger <clears throat> and Larry Post. And, you know, I've been there ever since working. Okay, thank you. I don't have any further questions. Commissioners, do you? Seeing no questions, are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling Spin Boston LLC, doing business as Spin, located at 30 Melcher Street. Holder of a common bitular seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to change the manager of the license business from Gustavo Zeilberberg to Michael Joseph Martin. Attorney Andrew Upton. Attorney Upton? Uh, Attorney Upton is here, but the manager has requested that he speak on his own behalf. Mr. Martin, are you here? Uh, on the manager's behalf, I would request a second call. Okay, we'll take a second call. Calling Del Frisco's of Boston, LLC, doing business as Del Frisco's Double Eagle Steakhouse, located at 888 Boylston Street. Holder of a common vigilator seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to change the manager of the license business from Felix Albano to Kathleen Toroski. Attorney Joseph Devlin. Attorney Devlin? Elizabeth Pisano filling in for Attorney Devlin from Upton, Connell, and Devlin. Uh, Kathleen should be on here with me today. Hello, everyone. How are you? Good morning. Um, so Kathleen uh, has had many years of experience in the food and beverage industry. She's been working for Del Frisco's for the past six years, and she is currently the general manager at the Back Bay Prudential Center location. Um, she is a U.S. citizen and a Massachusetts resident. Uh, she's familiar with the rules and regulations regarding the sales and service of alcohol, and there are no other changes at the restaurant. Okay, thanks for covering that. I don't have any questions. Commissioners, do you? Seeing no questions, are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hard Rock Cafe International, STP Inc., doing business as Hard Rock Cafe, located at 20 Clinton Street. Holder of a common vigilator seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned for a change of officers, directors, LLC manager, Attorney Scott Holmes. Attorney Holmes? Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Commissioner. Good morning, uh, Attorney Hawkins. Uh, Scott Holmes here on behalf of the Hard Rock. I also have somewhere in this Zoom life uh, the GM, Wandy LaFleur. Wandy, you there? Yes, I am. Hello, everyone. How you doing? Okay, thank you. Um, this is, uh, thank God, uh, some changes to the upper tier management of the Hard Rock Cafe or Hard Rock International. There's actually uh, three people who have been uh, proposed here. John Stephen Lucas would be the new president. Uh, John Robert Eater would be the new vice president slash treasurer slash director. And Francis Joseph Chesky III will also be a vice president, secretary, and director. Uh, these are just upper tier uh, management that's down in Florida. Uh, thank God Wandy's still here. The cafe is still here. And there are no other proposed changes to the license whatsoever. Thank you. I don't have any questions. Commissioners, do you have any questions? Seeing none, are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Calling the JLLC, doing business as the Junction Tavern, located at 110 Dorchester Street. Holder of a common vigilator seven-day alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to change the DBA of the license business from the Junction Tavern to Hunters. Attorney Dennis Quilty. Attorney Quilty. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Attorney Ryan Gosta from McDermott, Quilty and Miller, standing in for Dennis Quilty this morning. I believe also with us on the call this morning is Michael Conlin, who's the yes. owner of the establishment. Uh, this is regarding the restaurant Junction Tavern at 110 Dorchester Street. We're before you this morning on a change of DBA application. The licensee previously acquired ownership of 
the establishment and I believe 2019 and this is the former name that came with the restaurant but they're now looking to revitalize and rebrand the space under the new name Hunters. Um, other than the name change there'll be you know other operational changes proposed there'll be a slight menu change to offer southern comfort food um, but other than this there are no other operational changes proposed. I don't know if Michael has anything to add as well. Would you say you 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 look a lot different than Dennis Quilty? <laughs> Um, no, I think Ryan said that there's no, it's just a, a straight DBA change, um, entertainment capacity, hours, manager, everything is the, is the same. It's just changed the name from the junction to hunters. Okay. And as your attorney said, just a change in the concept as far as food offerings and stuff. Yes. You know, just like yes. Okay. I don't have any questions. Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner McCarran, do you? See no questions. Are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Calling BRV Dining Group LLC doing business as Blackstone located at 15 Union Street. Holder of a common vigilaire seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned, petitioned to change the doing business as of the licensed business from Blackstone to Alma. Attorney Carolyn Conway. Attorney Conway. Good morning, members of the board. Uh, I, I also have with me today, Mr. Dave Ferrando. This is just a simple name change to Alma to reflect the, the fact that the restaurant is going Mexican. Uh, so we're going to have all, it's all new fare as opposed to what it was before um, in, at Blackstone. Okay. So no change to capacity or layout or floor plan or anything? No. Okay. I don't have any further questions, commissioners, do you? Are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Calling Clarendon Restaurant LLC doing business as Post 390 located at 406 Stewart Street. Holder of a common vigilaire seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to change the doing business as of the licensed business from post 390 to the bank's fish house. Attorney Stephen Miller. Attorney Miller. Good morning, Madam Chair, Commissioners, Executive Secretary. Uh, Attorney Tom Miller on behalf of McDermott, Quilty, and Miller, representing the Clarendon Restaurant Group uh, in their application for this change of DBA at their premise on, at 406 Stewart Street. Uh, I'm joined by Brian Summers of the Himmel Hospitality Group. Uh, as the board is aware, uh, an alteration of premise was approved um, by this board on uh, June 24th of this year. Uh, prior to that hearing, we had to we withdrew the uh, um, change of DBA associated with that alteration. Uh, we're here before you today to complete the change from the former post 390 to the bank's fish house uh, with this last step. Um, there's no additional changes beyond those previously approved. Um, and uh, we want to thank you for hearing us today and we're happy to answer any questions the board may have. Okay. Um, and Attorney Miller, you're, when are you planning on opening? Uh, I believe they uh, started operations this week okay. or are trying to start operations this week. Uh, that's, what I, that's what I thought. All right, thank you. I don't have any questions, Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curran. Are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling 49 Melcher Restaurant Group LLC, doing business as Bastille Kitchen Chalet, located at 49 Melcher Street. Holder of a common vigilaire seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to change the doing business as of the licensed business from Bastille Kitchen to Moo. Lastly, has petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business from James Arsenal to Courtney Hills. Attorney Bill Ferullo. Attorney Ferullo. Uh, good morning, uh, members of the board. Um, uh, I am representing Fine Night Melcher Restaurant Group, LLC. Uh, for the two matters mentioned, one is the uh, change of manager. We would uh, have with us today uh, Courtney Hills, I believe, is on our Zoom, uh, who will be the new manager. So I'll address that first. Uh, Courtney has uh, been approved in the past uh, as a manager of record uh, for uh, work in Boston, and that's been at the uh, Yacht House uh, in the Fenway District, uh, where she spent the last uh, nine years. Uh, she also um, 
has uh, an extensive uh, academic career. She has a, a BA in culinary arts and hospitality management, as well as an MBA in uh, hospitality management. Uh, she's coming on uh, as a replacement manager. Uh, the restaurant uh, closed in November after being open for only four occasions uh, since COVID started. Uh, and we've been without the manager uh, until now. Uh, as mentioned, since she's been approved, she is a, a citizen uh, of the United States, a resident of Massachusetts, uh, and extensive uh, experience with uh, rules and regulations of the board and the Commonwealth. Uh, in addition, we're uh, doing a name change because we are changing over from uh, a French bistro uh, to a fine dining steakhouse. Uh, the name Mu that you should be familiar with from uh, the hotel at 15 Beacon uh, is licensing the name uh, to us uh, until such time, which uh, will take place after the first of the year uh, when we will create a new entity. Uh, at that time, uh, Paul Roif and Jamie Mamamo, uh, who are the principals in Mu at 15 Beacon, uh, will be part of uh, a new entity that will be created uh, with Seth Greenberg to operate this restaurant. Uh, in the interim, we are planning on opening in September uh, for a break-in period uh, with Courtney uh, managing the restaurant. Uh, it will be extremely similar to uh, Moo at 15 Beacon, meaning uh, the same menu uh, to somewhat of a, a limited um, uh, stage at the beginning. Uh, and we will uh, be serving uh, lunch and dinner, but we will not have lunch service uh, until after the first year. Okay, thank you for that explanation um, and for covering the manager of record questions. Um, I don't have any further questions, Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curran. Seeing none, are there any, are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding this matter? Good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Councilor Flink's office. At this moment, we'd like to ask for a deferral so that the neighborhoods, the neighbors from the Four Point Neighborhood Association and Councilor Flink can meet with the proponent on this project to discuss public safety and quality of life issues. Thank you. And for the record, what is before the board today is a strict manager of record change and a DBA change that does not uh, necessitate public input. As Attorney Perullo noted, there is a forthcoming transfer. So we will defer to the to the board on the DBA and the manager of record and allow Attorney Perullo and, and the applicant to work with the community. And so if there's anyone who has specific testimony on the manager of record and her qualifications or the DBA itself. Tom Reddy from IFPNA, the Neighborhood Association that um, covers uh, Fort Point and the Seaport. So. I recognize that uh, it's we don't have any comments as it relates to the manager of record. We do have concerns about the transfer and the name change uh, and the operations of the restaurant itself. Uh, and we'd just like sure. to have those uh, those questions answered and concerns addressed. Thank you. Great. Thank and you, so sir. therefore would request for a deferment. Thank you. Okay, again, we're taking testimony specific to the manager of record and her qualifications under Massachusetts general law as well as the DBA change. Is there any other testimony on those two specific points? Seeing none, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Calling Backos Wine and Cheese Inc. doing business as Backos Wine and Cheese located at 31 St. James Avenue. Holder of a retail package store, all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to amend the description of the licensed business. From in one room on first floor with office and prep area, entrance exit off, off of St. James Avenue and to building lobby arcade. Amending two in one room on first floor, 2,850 square feet with office and prep area, entrance exit off of St. James Avenue and to building lobby arcade. Attorney Dennis Quilty. Attorney Quilty. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Ryan Gazda from McDermott, Quilty and Miller again on behalf of Attorney Dennis Quilty. With me this morning is Robert Bacco, who is the owner and manager of record of this establishment. This is Bacco's at 31 St. James Avenue. Uh, this restaurant, as the name implies, sells a variety of fine wines and cheeses. Uh, and it's been in operation for over five years. 
is an application for an alteration of premise to expand the interior footprint of the store by approximately 2,800 square feet to move some additional space into an adjacent um, side of the building, if you will, within the same envelope. Uh, in addition to the expansion of the footprint of the building, um, we're asking for permission to open at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Other than this, there are no other operational changes proposed. Um, prior to coming before you this morning, we have discussed these proposals with the Neighborhood Association of Back Bay, and they've indicated that they have no opposition. Um, so with that, we're happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Attorney. I don't have any questions. Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Carr. Seeing no questions, are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Lisa I with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. They met with the Neighbor Association of Back Bay and received non-opposition. The Mayor's Office would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Good morning, Madam the Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Councillor Flink's office. The councillor would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who wish to testify regarding this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling Babo and Oteca FP LLC, doing business as Babo Pizzeria E and Oteca, located at 11 Van Pier Boulevard. Holder of a common vigilar seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to transfer the license from the above to 11 Van Pier Restaurant LLC, doing business as Serafina at the same location. Seth Greenberg, manager, 2 a.m. closing hour, attorney William Perulo. Attorney Perulo. Uh, good morning again, uh, members of the board. Uh, uh, Mr. Greenberg's having some difficulty getting on. Uh, I don't know if you want to put this on a second call or you want me to do uh, everything excluding the uh, manager. But uh, unfortunately, I can't see you guys, but I can hear you. Okay. Uh, I, I take that back. He is now he is now on the, uh, the Zoom. Uh, again, uh, thank you. I am uh, before you representing 11 Fan Pia Restaurant LLC, uh, which is in the process of uh, purchasing to operate a Serafina uh, in the space that was Babo uh, and Oteca. Uh, the uh, <clears throat> Serafina concept has been in Boston. Uh, for uh, just shy of 10 years now, uh, 10 High Street and on Newbury Street. Uh, it's a fine dining Italian uh, restaurant. Uh, this is a corp to corp transfer. So we are taking uh, the space over with the same uh, occupancy uh, hours of operation. Uh, we will uh, make some interior changes uh, and with an expectation that this is going to open sometime in October. Uh, we have a 10-year lease with two five-year options on space. Uh, we will be uh, training staff. Uh, Mr. Greenberg uh, will be in Boston starting uh, at the end of the month, uh, both for the purpose of uh, hiring uh, staff uh, for this restaurant, as well as uh, the earlier uh, Moo uh, restaurant that I uh, was on the Zoom for. Uh, he has been in the business since 1983 and has been a manager of record for 16 years in Boston uh, at prior locations. Uh, he will be uh, residing at uh, 263 Newbury Street during this period of time uh, with the intention that we hire uh, a different manager once uh, that person is identified uh, and brought in. So uh, the manager will change, uh, we are hoping prior to the October opening of this restaurant, uh, we expect it at least, uh, since we have uh, interviewed a number of people for that position. Um, with that, uh, Mr. Greenberg is also on the line to answer questions. Thank you, Bill. Uh, thank you. Um, so I think you covered all the manager of record questions. Um, and this is just a corp to corp transfer. Um, I don't have any other questions. Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Carter? Seeing no questions, are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? 
Good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Councillor Flink's office. The councillor would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who wish to testify regarding this matter? Seeing no one, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Calling Sullivan's Pub of Charlestown, Inc., doing business as Sullivan's Pub, located at 85 to 87 Main Street. Holder of a common vigilaire seven day all alcoholic beverages license is petitioned to transfer the license from the above to 85 Main Street, LLC, doing business as Sullivan's Public House at the same location. Michael K. Lantagni, manager, 1 a.m. closing hour, attorney Michael Ford. Attorney Ford. Good morning. Again, Michael Ford, uh, with me is Matthew Sullivan, the uh, going to be the 100% uh, owner <clears throat> and LLC manager. And Michael Lantain is with us here today, also is the proposed uh, licensed premises uh, manager. It's a straight transfer, same location, uh, same concept. Uh, it's financed 100% uh, funds from Mr. Sullivan. There's no changes proposed. Uh, it's going to be the full service traditional, uh, you know, American fair. Although I will note, um, you know, we're, we're hoping to sort of raise the game on that uh, and and make improvements. Closing hour, 1 a.m., occupancy 65 people. And the manager of record, Mr. Lantain, uh, has significant uh, experience in the alcohol industry, most notable from 2001 to present as the bar manager at Quarters, where he's you know essentially done it all. He's familiar with the rules and regulations of this board and the Alcoholic Beverages Control Commission, Massachusetts resident and US citizen. Uh, the community outreach just reached out to ONS, uh, who uh, informed us nothing further would be required because it's the Simple corp to uh, license transfer, uh, rather. 10 year lease. Uh, and that's what we have. And we ask for your uh, consideration. Thank you, Attorney Ford. And thank you for covering that. I don't have any questions. Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curran. Seeing no questions, are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who wish to testify? Seeing none, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Calling Canal Street Realty LLC, located at 166 Canal Street. Holder of a common vigilaire seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to transfer the license from the above to Boston Garden Forest LLC, doing business as scores at the same location. Fred Sarakov, manager, 2 a.m. closing hour. Attorney Michael Ford. Attorney Ford? Good morning, Michael Ford again for the proposed licensee. With me is Fred Starikoff, uh, owner and proposed uh, licensed premises uh, manager. <clears throat> Straight transfer of an alcohol uh, license uh, for, I think it was about 40 years, uh, the force has been at this uh, location and they have uh, closed. And so Mr. Starikoff, who has uh, significant experience with his, uh, with his uh, partners in uh, operations, of uh, hospitality entities as, as such is taking it over to be operated as scores. Um, this, the, the nice thing about this, they're acquiring the, uh, the, 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 the license and they're also through a different entity acquiring the real estate. So put it uh, like this, they're all in. Uh, There's gonna be a complete update beautification but it's gonna essentially stay the same. So things have been pulled out of there and they're gonna be re replaced with more up-to-date. Uh, no other operation changes, closing hour 2 a.m. Um, the manager of record, Mr. Starkoff, who's with us, uh, he's uh, an approved manager by the ABCC on RFO Sullivan's, uh, owner of uh, multiple licenses uh, in establishments licensed by this very board uh, and the successful uh, owner and operator of City Realty that's a real estate development holding uh, company. He's familiar with the rules and regulations of this board as well as the ABCC, US citizen and uh, mass uh, resident. Um, there was, uh, did uh, quite a bit of uh, community outreach there was a successful meeting with the Downtown North Association in May, a uh, meeting with West End Civic Association in June, and obviously co close communications with ONS. Um, the lease is gonna be 10 years, but again, with essentially um, a similar closely connected uh, uh, entity. 
And with that, we ask for your consideration. Is Mr. Starikov here? I just don't see him. Yeah, hi, hi, Madam Chair, members of the board. I'm, oh. I got a phone as well. I'm having the same problem I think other people have had. I have to go into settings and fix something. Okay, no. I, I see your name highlighted when um, you do speak. So we'll take that. Um, we'll take that as confirmation. And just to confirm again, Attorney Ford or, or Mr. Starikov, you've been approved by this board as a manager of record in the past? Uh, not yes. by this board. He's been approved by, I think it was Somerville and then through the ABCC. Okay. It was an owner of four, uh, four entities that's licensed by this board. Okay. And you did cover the um, manager of record questions. Anyways, I don't have any questions. Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curran? Seeing no questions, are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding this matter? Seeing no one, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you very much. Thank you so Thank much. You. Calling St. Oriental Corporation, doing business as New Jumbo Seafood Restaurant, located at 5 to 9 Hudson Street. Holder of a common vitular seven-day wine and malt beverages license is petitioned to transfer the license and the location from the above to Panda Hot Pot Chinatown, Inc., doing business as Wei Shu Wu Hot Pot, located at 19 to 19A, 21 and 23 Hudson Street. The premise consists of 3,425 square feet on the first floor with a dining room with seating capacity of 100 and kitchen. Ben Cheng, Chen, manager, 3 a.m. closing hour. Attorney Peter Lim. Attorney Lim. Is Attorney Lim present or is anyone present on behalf of Panda Hot Pot Chinatown? Hi, uh, my name is Tiffany. I'm re representing my cousin, Ben Chen, regarding uh, 21 Hudson Street, Panda Spicy Pot, Chinatown. Uh, Tiffany, what was your last name? H-U-A-N-G, Hong. Thank you. Do you want to explain the, uh, the to the board what you're proposing? Yeah, uh, we're doing a beer wine license transfer, which basically is on the, uh, the same street. Just different numbers. Uh, we're doing, we're opening a hot pot restaurant in Chinatown. Okay. Is Mr. Chen with you? Uh, no. Okay. Um, we do need the manager record to be sworn in. Is he available? Uh, no, he's not here with me right now. We will need him to, um, to appear before the board. Would he be available to come to the board's voting meeting at 10 a.m. tomorrow on Zoom? Uh, tomorrow, uh, yeah, I'll let him know. Yeah, we just have to ask the four standard questions of the new manager record um, before we can approve him as okay. the manager. Sounds good. I don't have any questions about the, the transfer. Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curran, do you? Seeing no questions, are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Lisa High with the Mayor's Office and Neighborhood Services. They met with the local civic associations and um, one of the major concerns raised was the hours of operation, which was the 3 a.m. closing time, but the applicant has agreed to a 2 a.m. closing hour and alcohol sales terminating at 1 a.m. So therefore the mayor's office would like to go in record and support and ask that the applicant continues dialogue with the neighborhood. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Councillor Flink's office. The councillor would like to go record in support and ask the proponent to work closely, closely with neighbors and the neighborhood association to co compromise regarding the closing hour. It is my understanding that they went down to 2 a.m., but the neighborhood, the neighbors are asking for a 12 a.m. closing hour. And we just wanted to bring that into the board's attention. Thank you. And this hung, uh, and this might be a confirmation for your cousin, but you have agreed to a one day, a two a.m. close with alcohol sales ceasing at one a.m. Yes. Okay, thank you. Are there any other individuals who wish to testify regarding this matter? Seeing none, we will take this matter under advisement. But. Uh, Please, uh, someone from our office will also reach out to make sure that we can uh, have the manager of record on tomorrow morning. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. Yep.
calling Trin Enterprises, Inc., doing business as Old Colony Wine and Spirits, located at 259 Dorchester Street. Holder of a retail package store, all alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to transfer the license from the above to Sobo Wine, Inc., doing business as Sobo Wine and Spirits at the same location. Arianne Litton, manager, closing hour 11 p.m. Lastly, is petitioned to pledge the license inventory and stock to East Cambridge Savings Bank, Attorney Nelson Chang. Attorney Chang. Morning. For the record, Attorney Nelson Chang with offices at 47 Jackson Street in Saugus, Massachusetts, representing the petitioner Sobo Wine, Inc. With me is Aaron Witten, who is the principal of the corporation and will also be the manager. Mr. Witten is a U.S. citizen as well as a Massachusetts resident and has held other licenses with the Commonwealth previously. He is well acquainted with the requirements of the ABCC and Boston licensing. The store is going to be continued pretty much as is. Uh, they are seeking to finance conditionally for the purpose of upgrading fixtures and inventory and cosmetics. Uh, the hours will remain the same. It'll basically be the same operation, just upgraded somewhat. The financing has already been arranged with East Cambridge Savings Bank for a total of 473.45 at 5% fixed for 90 months. The balance of the purchase price is coming from savings. Uh, Mr. Lynn is here, and we are available to answer any questions. Okay. Um, are there any conditions on the previous license? I guess we'll get to that in a second. Um, I don't have any questions at this point. Uh, Commissioner Saxon, Commissioner Curran. See no questions. Are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding this application, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Good morning, my name is the chair, members of the board. Anna Calderon from Council of Streams Office. The councilor would like to go on record in support based on feedback from the Andrew Square Civic Association. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who wish to testify regarding this application? Right, seeing none, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Calling SM Restaurant Group LLC, doing business as Red Hat Cafe, located at 9 Bowdoin Street. Holder of a common Michelin seven day all alcoholic beverages license is petitioned to transfer the license from the above to Can't Stop, Won't Stop, doing business as Red Hat Cafe at the same location. Jason Nicholson, manager, 2 a.m. closing hour. Secondly, has petitioned to pledge the license to SP Restaurant Group Inc. Attorney Andrew Upton. Attorney Upton. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, Commissioners. Andrew Upton for the applicant. Uh, what we have here is a corp to corp transfer. Mr. Nicholson is purchasing the red hat on Beacon Hill. He has been a manager before. He was the manager at Game On. He was also the manager of record at Finn McCool's, approved twice by this board and the ABCC, and he's had no problems. He will run it, he will own it, he will manage it. Um, and basically what is happening is the previous owner of the, the Red Hat has decided to retire. Mr. Nicholson has uh, come in to purchase it. It's going to be the same Red Hat that generations have uh, known and loved. There will be no changes to any aspects of the operation. He will bring in some new furniture, uh, some paint and paper. Uh, hopefully a much needed deep cleaning will also occur. Um, but basically, it's going to be him running the Red Hat. We have uh, spoken with ONS, who required no community outreach since it has been a licensed establishment for years in the exact same location. Um, and as the board may be aware, uh, when it appeared in the Boston Globe and on social media that the Red Hat was closing, which of course was not actually accurate, uh, they had a tremendous outpouring uh, to Mr. Nicholson and the current donor uh, of people uh, who were disappointed that it was not going to be there any longer. And it turns out that's not true. They're actually going to keep it going the same as it ever was. Uh, and we believe the customers in the community will be happy with that. And we're glad to answer any questions. I just, I'm just looking for Mr. Nicholson. I know he's already been approved by our board, but I just want to make sure he's present. I saw him there. He was Jason Nicholson. Oh, okay. Yes. Yep. Thanks. Sometimes. Yes, I see you now. The okay. square, square lights up when it, you do speak. Um, okay, thank you for explaining that. Um, I don't have any questions, Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon. 
Seeing no questions, are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding this application, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Good morning, Madam with the Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Councillor Flynn's office. The councillor would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who wish to testify regarding this application? Seeing no one, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Calling Lay Inc. doing business as Lay's located at 137 Brighton Avenue. Holder of a common vigilar seven day wine and malt beverages license has petitioned to transfer the license from the above to DYL Hot Pot Alston LLC doing business as Dalongi Hot Pot at the same location. Ping Hong Chen, manager, 2 a.m. closing hour. Secondly, has petitioned to pledge the stock and inventory to Lay Inc. Attorney Chase Liu. Attorney Liu. Thank you, uh, Matt. Madam Chairwoman, Secretary Hawkins, members of the board, good morning. Uh, this is Chase Liu, counsel for DLY Hot Pot Alston LLC, doing business as Da Long Yi Hot Pot. Just to be clear, uh, we are the petitioners. Uh, Lays Inc. is the seller. This liquor license transfer application arises from the purchase and sale of the entirety of the assets uh, of Lays Inc., um, including the liquor license. Uh, the purchase and sale agreement was executed on June 16th. Uh, the lease has also been, uh, the consent uh, to assign the lease has been obtained from the landlord and a provisional, a provisional uh, lease amendment has also been negotiated. The new lease will go um, to the end of 2027. Uh, all uh, both the closing of the purchase and sale and the lease will be contingent upon the approval of uh, the subject application by uh, this board as well as the ABCC. Uh, the purchase price is five hundred fifty thousand dollars, sixty thousand of which has been paid into escrow. Another portion will be paid at closing, along with a promissory note for uh, the remaining portion, one hundred fifty thousand. And uh, there is no outside uh, financing. It will be uh, given by the buyer to the seller. And the seller has asked and uh, the buyer has agreed to uh, take collateral uh, of uh, the buyer applicant's uh, inventory and stock. Uh, there will be no operational, excuse me, there are no uh, construction related uh, changes, uh, no changes to the floor plan, no changes to occupancy. Um, but uh, we are asking for a change of operational hours from um, the existing uh, hours to 11 a.m. to 2 a.m., uh, seven days a week. Uh, the new manager, uh, her name is Ping Hong Chen. Uh, she is here today to uh, answer questions directly, but she is a U.S. citizen. She is a Massachusetts resident, and she is familiar with the applicable rules and regulations regarding the sales of alcohol um, in the city as well as the Commonwealth. We uh, met with the Alston Civic Association, uh, appeared at the general meeting as well as the e-board meeting, and um, perhaps um, Mr. Newman can uh, speak more to that after, but, but uh, there is no uh, opposition there. Uh, happy to uh, answer uh, questions as well as uh, make Ms. Chen available to answer questions as the um, manager of record applicant. I just I just haven't spotted um, Ms. Chen on um, the I hearing. I believe she's calling in through um, phone, so it might be a phone number. Hi. Oh, Jasmine Kwong. Okay. Yes, sorry. I'm using my uh, daughter's uh, computer. <laughs> okay, yes. thank you. So I just wanted to confirm you were with us. Your attorney did cover all the questions um yes. about this transfer and about your qualifications as manager of records so i don't have any questions commissioner saxon saxon or commissioner curran are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives yes madam chair members of the board connor newman with the mayor's office neighborhood services um, as you heard i can confirm the applicant went to the alston civic association which is the active neighborhood group and received their full support uh, we think this will be a welcome addition to uh, the alston village area Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who wish to testify regarding this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Secretary you. Hawkins. Thank you. Calling Jimerson Enterprises LLC, doing business as Larry J's BBQ Cafe, located at 600 D Street, has applied for a common vigilar seven-day malt and wine license to be exercised on the above. 
with a closing hour of 12 a.m. Manager Larry Jimerson. The board has already heard this matter and has voted. This is just a procedural requirement due to a defect with the abutter notifications. Calling Oasis Enterprise Group Inc. doing business as Oasis Restaurant located at 33 Hancock Street has applied for Common Vigilar seven day wine and malt beverages license to be exercised on the above. One room, 2,200 2, square feet, restaurant dining area with 127 occupancy, kitchen and bar setup on the main floor, prep and secure storage facility on the basement level. Manager Chesterfield Coffin, closing hour 11 p.m. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Chesterfield Coffin. Um, good, good morning, thanks um, for having me. My name is Chesterfield Coffin, um, owner of Oasis Restaurant. Um, We've been at this location for possibly two years. Uh, we've decided not to um, move forward with a um, alcohol license for the first couple of years, simply because we want to build um, some sort of foundation, gain the um, community's trust as, as well as the neighborhood association's trust um, because of the previous um, owners who were there prior to us. This place was um, had beer- It's a full, 11 think, o'clock. Excuse me a full beer and wine license prior to us. Um, I am a citizen of the United States. I've been here for 34 years. I, I'm also familiar with the laws of the licensing boards as well as the ABCC. Um, I've worked at um, food and beverage for over 20 years, assistant general manager at the Marriott Hotel where we had um, um, food and beverage as well as alcohol. And I was the person who was in charge of that. Um, I've been in alcohol training. I am TIP certified. Um, we met successfully with the Hancock Civic Association, Opens Corner Main Street, as well as the, uh, we had a community meeting. Um, all objections were answered and, 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 and within agreement. Um, I asked for your consideration um, to this license. I think it would be a great addition to the community. I think it will help us tremendously um, in terms of our sales. Um, there's other businesses within a one mile range that has um, full liquor license, but we are we only asking for a beer and wine license so that we can help um, build our traffic flow as well as be an addition enhancements to the community. Thank you, Mr. Coffin. Uh, one of the questions the board looks to when uh, deciding about whether or not they grant um, a license at a particular location is the public need. Um, could you describe for us the public need for a beer and wine license? You just mentioned that there's a lot of all alcohol licenses in the general area. Are there any other beer and wine license, licenses in that general area or would you be, would this be a new concept? This, um, I know that I know they have um, all alcohol in terms of beer and wine license. Um, this previous location had uh, um, I beer and wine and I think liquor or full liquor license, I'm not 100% certain. Um, however, we are going with beer and wine license simply because we serve Caribbean food and um, so Southern food. And um, with the spice that we do provide, um, beer and wine would be an uh, addition to the food, the food that we serve. Um, if, if you've ever been to the Caribbean, you'll know, you'll know that most di dinners and din dining experience comes with beer and wine. Okay, that's helpful. Um, so it'll complement the cuisine that you're serving at this location. Absolutely. Okay, I don't have any questions. Commissioner Saxon, do you or Commissioner Curran? I don't see no questions. Are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Denise DeSantos here from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We would like to go on record and support the applicant. He did the community process and has support from Director Butters and the association with concerns around parking and just making sure that his hours of operation doesn't change. So we do recommend he just continues the community process with them. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who wish to testify regarding this application? Seeing none, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you very much. Thank you. Calling Homestead Bakery and Cafe LLC located at 1448 Dorchester Avenue has applied for common vigilar seven day all alcoholic beverages license to be exercised in the above 
Located on the ground floor of approximately 1,000 square feet, there is a handicap accessible bathroom, an open kitchen and dining area with 31 seats. There is additional storage and basement not accessible to patrons. Manager Shi Yu Wu, closing hour 11 p.m. Who's present on behalf of the applicant? Hi, good morning, everybody. This is Shi Yu Wu, present, even though name says Jack on it on there. Hi, uh, um, uh, good morning again. Um, as the folks may know or recall, uh, the Homestead Bakery and Cafe was first opened in 2016 with a seven day all alcohol license. So for the first four and a half years of operation prior to the pandemic, we hosted a, a breakfast, uh, lunch on a, a daily basis, seven days a week. We also hosted monthly events about between the poetry and music reading, uh, uh, poetry reading music, as well as um, uh, game nights, the uh, storytelling, uh, as well as artist receptions. And there were uh, also occasional experiences, uh, dining experiences uh, celebrating uh, the uh, diverse community uh, where the Fields Corner, uh, uh, where Field, Fields Corner represents. Um, so we, uh, our, our operations were interrupted uh, due to COVID-19 pandemic. And in order to preserve capital, we decided not to renew the license at the end of 2020, unfortunately. And given that uh, the state of emergency has been lifted and our state has, population in our state has been great, uh, mostly vaccinated, we're uh, in the process of reopening, therefore appearing in front of this uh, board to uh, seek approval to reopen. Um, I am the proposed uh, manager on the record. I am a US citizen, a resident of the state of Massachusetts, and I, uh, I am familiar with the rules and regulations uh, related to serving and sales of alcoholic beverage uh, with this uh, board as well as ABCC, and I was a previous manager on the record. Um, thank you, Mr. Wu, and I am familiar with the location and the license you had there, but I just want to remind you that you did not renew the license there, so this is a whole new process, yes. um, and th there may not be a license available for you at this location. Things are rapidly changing. Um, that's why we have tried very hard to get in touch with you through various um, various avenues to encourage you to renew um, during the renewal. Some of these things are out of our hands, but we will take this into consideration. Um, the public need for a restaurant at this location, for this type of license at this location. Um, no, no changes to um, to the restaurant other than your reopening. Uh, no changes operationally speaking, and I we are looking into adding to a more uh, dinner service on a more permanent basis. Okay, I don't have any questions, Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curran. Seeing no questions, are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding this application, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. This is George Wynn with the Mayor's Office of the Neighborhood Services. On June 1st, the applicant met with the Fields Corner Civic Association, which voiced support for the proposal. And this Monday, July 26th, our office held an abutters meeting for the applicant uh, where, where we heard no concerns. And given that the applicant had previously, previously held an all alcohol license before they were forced to close during the pandemic, at this time, uh, the mayor's office would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who wish to testify regarding this application? Seeing none, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling Gellis Corp, doing business as Las Delicias Colombianas 2, located at 1231 River Street, has applied for a common vigilar seven day wine and malt beverages with the Coors license to be exercised on the above. Premise consists of one floor, approximately 850 square feet, one kitchen, seating capacity for 45, two bathrooms, one entrance exit. Mildred Miguel Angel Gallego, closing hour 11 p.m. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Hi, good morning. My name is Miguel Gallego, um, the owner of Las Delicias Colombiana. Uh, I've been in the restaurant for four years, and uh, I finally took over on January. The dream come true. So I've been working uh, for for get this done, get this done well. Uh, I'm working as many kitchens and as bartender. I Cooking for over 16 years in Boston. So now I want to hold my passion and love on this 
on my own place. So I uh, try to involve and send me everything that I know uh, with delicious place and delicious drinks uh, by asking you guys for a permit or license for leak license. Um, I want to get a uh, um, get more experience with the people for, about the Colombian tour. Uh, bring more people to the community. Uh, get more experience uh, and get more people, more business for for myself. Get successful for my wife, my two kids. Uh, they support support me a lot and I appreciate it. And I like to you guys. Supporting my business in the community too. And I'm open for any questions. Uh, is there any questions? Um, just taking a look. We open seven days a week. Do you guys okay. hear me? And you, yes, and, you, and you're planning on closing at 11 p.m., okay. is that correct? Um, now we're closing by 8 p.m. because Around is a lot of business area, so they close in early. So we close in by 8 p.m., but we try to get a uh, closing by 10, our uh, latest, uh, only Fridays and Saturdays. Okay, and you've been at this location for four years now? You said? I've been looking, yes, for four years, yes. Okay. And uh, two cover from my uncle on January. And last, Couple of years we've been trying to get the, uh, the license. Uh, I think in 2019 we get approved. Uh, we did an application with Ambrosio Brown. I don't know if you know the guy. Okay. We get approved, but it wasn't a, a license available. So okay. we had to apply for, for the license again. Yes. Okay, so um, Mr. Gallego, are you a citizen? Yes, I do. Do you live in Massachusetts? Uh, yes, uh, over 16, over almost 16 years, yes. Thank you. And you've already described that you have experience in the food and beverage industry. Uh, my last question is, are you familiar with the rules and regulations of our board, the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I don't have any other questions. Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curran? Seeing no questions, are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yeah. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Danielle Fonseca with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Our office would like to go on record in support of Las Delicias Colombianas II. The owner, Miguel, and I sat at his restaurant on June 9th to go over some steps for the community process and make sure that he was completing the proper and required steps before the hearing due to a bit of a language barrier. He and I kept in contact on a weekly basis until the abutters meeting was held on July 13th. Miguel is extremely passionate about the restaurant and the community. He's been in the business, as he mentioned, as a manager for the past four years and an owner of this restaurant for the last six months. His goal is to bring more business to Hyde Park and to continue to offer a family-friendly environment. During the community outreach process, Miguel connected with Hyde Park Main Streets, and we worked together to inform all the community stakeholders and neighborhood associations in the area. The proposal received several written testimony and phone calls to our office expressing support for the restaurant. Many res uh, residents during the abutters meeting expressed that Miguel is a caring and responsible business owner and community member. And excuse me. And in regards to potential concerns that may arise um, with parking due to the restaurant's location, um, there's a parking lot that is located behind the restaurants that guests can access. So it is my belief that this restaurant will help to improve the business in High Park along with rebuilding a sense of community and family after what's been a difficult time for many black and minority business owners. So at this time, I do not foresee any additional um, negative impacts to the community with this proposal and we would like to see it move forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who wish to testify regarding this matter? Oh, I believe 
Uh, uh, Tim. Ah, uh, yes, Tim. sorry. Hi, my name is Tian Simpson. I'm a long-term oh. resident of High Park, and I am here on behalf of um, myself, my family, my community. I've known Miguel for for you know four years when he was manager, and I was very happy that he was able to uh, become owner of the business. Uh, Miguel is a very uh, responsible business owner. He is um, very involved in the community. Um, he renovated his space once he took over and made the inside very beautiful and welcoming. Um, we have very limited um, sit down restaurant in High Park. A couple have closed. And if, you know, allowing him to have beer and alcohol will help increase sale and help his business succeed. Um, the community is more than happy to support him. I also know a lot about me, um, our business district because I happen to work for High Park Main Street, but as I said, I'm here as a resident and I fully support um, Miguel. Thank you so much. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who wish to testify regarding this application? All right, seeing no one, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Calling Thank you. F's Bar and Lounge, doing business as Simply Bar and Bites, located at 3840 Washington Street, has applied for Common Vigilar's seven day wine and malt beverages license to be exercised in the above. Premise consists of one room on the first floor, 700 square feet with 20 seats and storage. Outdoor seasonal patio, 550 square feet on private property. Open April through October in the rear of building with 20 seats. Storage and basement, total square footage of the premise is 1,250 square feet. Hours of operation, 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. indoor and outdoor. There is a bar with eight seats. One bathroom on right side of premise with handicapped facilities. Manager, Florian Struga, closing hour, 11 p.m. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Good morning, everyone. My name is Rhea Struga, and this is my father, Florian Struga. Um, we're a small family business located at 3840 Washington Street in Jamaica Plain, and we're here today seeking a um, malt and beverages license for um, our business um, on the high demand of the community. We, we're we trying to get this ball rolling so we can um, provide the community with what they really want. Um, at this moment, we want to defer of a decision um, because we're in the process of um, meeting with Danielle Fonseca and Michael Reiskin in order to have a community meeting and um, send out the abutter notifications. So we just wanted you to hear the proposal today and then hoping to receive a vote um, after our community process is complete. Okay. Um, so can you tell me more about the food concept? It's um, simply bar and bites and you want beer and wine to accompany it? Yes, so um, at the hours of uh, 6 a.m., we have a lot of um, community uh, that go to the train station, so we're going to be providing for breakfast, and then at 11 a.m., um, for the Massachusetts laws of alcohol, we want it on weekends to be serving um, alcohol for brunch and for things like that, and then we'll also be serving lunch and dinner accompanied with alcohol as well for our bar restaurant. And it's uh, 20 seats inside total? Yes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And how long have you been in business here? So we've been in business for a little over three and a half years. Um, we've been running, um, my father had been the manager of the business with the previous owner, um, Kevin Walker, as being the owner of the restaurant. We were working with him using his full liquor license. So we have full experience with a complete liquor license um, as my father as the manager of the, um, of the business. Um, we have a full parking lot. Um, so we have um, availability for our guests to come in, park, enjoy a, a dinner, lunch, whatever they're here for, and then um, being responsible with having them, you know, sit um, and, and, you know, taking care of them while they're here. Okay, uh, Leslie, should I do the manager of record questions? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, Mr. Struga? Hi. Hi, your daughter did a great job, um, but I have a couple of questions for you. Are you a citizen? Yes, I am. Do you live in Massachusetts? Yes, I do. Do you have experience in the food and beverage industry? I do. Are you familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and then just one additional question for either of you. 
when we evaluate whether or not this is an appropriate location for an alcohol license, we always look to public need. Could you describe for us the public need of this type of license here? Are there any other licenses in the area or concepts? Is, does this differentiate itself in any way? Um, so we have a lot of, um, in this area, there's a lot of local breweries and a lot of, we're in Jamaica Plain. So the, the population is millennial, young. They wanna be seen at a restaurant where they can have their local breweries here and um, eating um, their favorite foods. And we have already had the liquor license at this location. So we okay. know what our clientele is. So we know who is, as soon as we, um, the owner left and took his license with him, we lost that business. And then the pandemic, we also lost a lot of business from that. So we're just looking to kind of rebuild business, bring back our clientele and, and you know, provide for our community here in, in uh, Jamaica Plain. Okay, thank you very much. I don't have any questions. Commissioner Saxon, do you or Commissioner Curran? Are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding this application beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Hi, uh, yes. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Tiffany Caballero here from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, given that my predecessor is transitioning out and while I'm still getting acclimated, we are asking the board um, to hold this vote until the abutters meeting is held. I will be working closely with Danielle Fonseca, the um, high park liaison, um, and she was covering the committee process. So at this point, we're just asking that the vote be held. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who wish to testify? I see that Michael Reiskin has his hand raised. Michael? Uh, yes, I'm Michael Reiskin. I live at uh, 425 South Huntington Avenue in Jamaica Plain. I'm a member of the Jamaica Plain Neighborhood Council and uh, chair of its public service committee. <laughs> We've been working with the Strugas and Tiffany Caballero and uh, Matt O'Malley's office and we're asking for a deferral of the decision. Uh, we're planning on a meeting next week on August 3rd, and we will uh, happily provide a letter after the community process. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who wish to testify? Hey, Thank Michael you. Giordano from Councilor O'Malley's office. Sorry, oh, I didn't want to- I'm sorry. Um, no, it's okay. I uh, just wanted to uh, go on, the council would like to go on record in support of this deferral. Thanks. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who wish to testify? Seeing no one, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. And we will take second call for item eight, Spin Boston LLC. Attorney Upton, is uh, Michael Martin available? Yes, good morning. Great, just one moment. Let me read this into the record. Calling Spin Boston LLC, doing business as Spin, located at 30 Melcher Street. Holder of a common vigilar seven day alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to change the manager of the license business from Gustavo Zalberberg to Michael Joseph Martin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Martin. Are you a citizen? I am. Are you a resident of the Commonwealth? I am also. Um, are you, do you have experience in the food and beverage industry? I do over 25 years in the industry and uh, spent a lot of time in the Boston area with Applebee's International, just uh, lots of years. Okay, um, are you familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Most certainly. Okay, I don't have any questions. Commissioners? Are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding this matter? Seeing on the board will take this under advisement. Those are all the items before the board today. Thank you all very much.